Hi, nice to see there are still so many people in talks and awake on Sunday, Sunday afternoon. So I'm Florian, I'm one of the RPM developers and we are talking about spec files today and packaging. So where are we and uh, why are we talking about this? Like two years ago, we, are, we RPM upstream rolled out the last two big features that are heavily infecting, uh, affecting uh, spec files. There was just a talk about uh, the most prominent about, which is uh, scriptlets and file triggers. And so, um, for those who have not been to this talk that was just in this room uh, before this one, so most of the scriptlets are now replaced and Fedora is just about basically to, to kick out the last few, few probably dozen or hundred scriptlets. Uh, and since then, RPM Upstream has been doing stuff that has not much impact on the packaging side. So, I say small features, but uh, there was uh, debug info was changed into uh, sub packages per package. Per so, there's one debug info sub package per sub package. And we did a lot of cleanup stuff, stuff that packages don't have to care about. Uh, the one thing that we did, we added new uh, terms for the rich dependency. So, there's new, now the new uh, with and without and unless. Uh, operators which work on the same package, which was an issue for especially Rust, which way you, the problem is you can specify like bigger, num bigger versions and smaller versions, but they match, may match different packages. So you're not actually able, we are not able to match like version ranges, which is needed for those stuff. Anyway, so we are now at a point where we think it's time to do something for packaging again with Fedora hopefully having absorbed the last huge change. Yes. Um, that's Fedora, for those who don't, have not seen it yet. Um, that's the growth over the last couple of years. I don't know if you can see that. If you can't see it, it doesn't matter. The, the blue line at the bottom is the number of source packages and it's growing and growing and growing and growing. It's basically a straight line from the humble starts of Fedora Core 1. And uh, so we have to expect that there will be even more packages for the years to come. There's no sign of Fedora bottoming out uh, or slowing down. Um, so the problem is with more and more packages, there's more and more work to do. And um, the question is how, how much more work can we actually do? And it, so we want to take the next uh, development cycle to look at things that can make packaging actually easier. The problem always has been that uh, RPM developers are surprise developers and not packagers. So we always have a more of a focus on the code than on the actual packages because who knows what's out there. I mean, there are 21,000 packages. There's, you, you couldn't even read them if, if you wanted to. <laughs> and so we will uh, look into this basically the next cycle. And the thing that worked very well with the scriptlets is the question, what can we actually remove from the, pack, from the spec file? So basically every byte that's not in there is a good byte, unless it works still, <laughs> then it's probably one too much. So there are a couple of things that, that, that we want to look into. One is uh, revisiting the scriptlets, but it's basically covered by the talk before. Um, what has come up pretty recently uh, with the I think Rust and maybe some of the other new languages is uh, automatic build dependencies, which I will talk about. That's an interesting topic. Then something that has been discussed uh, previously, but which is not really, which is kind of related to RPM, but maybe not a feature in RPM, is using this git data within the spec file, which I will talk briefly about. And there are two big things that might be uh, features for upcoming RPM versions, and one is uh, build templates, basically uh, um, having reusable uh, scripts and, and, and helpers for, for packages. And um, if you know how you build your package, you also want to package that into sub packages automatically or semi automatically, or at least not by typing stuff by hand all over again. So let's look into this. I will go over this only briefly because it fits the topic. So we will look at file triggers and how well they work and what's left in the scriptlet area. One thing that has 
come up in the talk previously also. That's the only thing I am currently aware of with regards to scripts is users and groups and the generation of users and groups. And I've been always been on the fence with is this something RPM should do or should not do, or is this something that's like implementation specific for the operating system or distribution you're packaging? RPM should, in my perspective, not care too much how the, how the distribution looks like that it packages, but the distribution should take care of that. But one could argue that if you're handling files, users and groups are kind of part of the POSIX standard and maybe it's integral part of files and uh, we should do something about it and we'll probably uh, think about, we will think about and probably implement uh, uh, a declarative way. This came up in a talk previously, this may take a while, but it's one of the last use cases for scriptlets that are kind of legitimate right now and we hope to solve this with that. Um, then there has been talks about using dist uh, git data uh, in spec files. This is probably not going to be a, a feature within RPM because this git is not part of RPM, but probably of tooling that wraps around the spec file. Um, I've given a, 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 a lightning talk on flock about this last year. There's been a, a lightning talk on this conference yesterday evening that you may want to look up and I'm guessing um, uh, there are people thinking about this and will probably work on a proposal within Fedora. So we will, from the RPM side, be uh, happy to help if there's any features that make this easier, but uh, it's not quite clear if, if it's anything that really uh, should be done within RPM itself. There are two things that, that, e that will probably yield the host the most benefit. One is the change log, which is always a, ha a hassle which could be generated from the, from the uh, git change log. And the second thing is the release number, which could also be just be counting up basically the, the commits, which would mean you cannot mess it up. We have to see if, if they are, what kind of helpers you need to, 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 to clean up things that don't work quite well. But that's, that's the two areas, and I think there will be people working on that, and we will help with that. Um, the main benefit will be, uh, will be reducing merge conflicts, which is currently pretty annoying if you try to merge uh, some changes to, to one release to another. I mean, it's basically, yeah, you retype everything or you reshuffle everything and the amount of work that is saved by the git merge is basically zero. And um, the main uh, sources of conflicts are actually change log and, re and the release number. And uh, there's a chance of getting rid of that, which is, probably saving a lot of stupid work. Yes, please. So, so there are a few ideas about this. One is basically to have uh, some uh, keywords that you can put into the git commit message. And if you want to fix up your git history, you could actually put tags on some commits to say, well, don't show up. So that's the two main mechanisms that can, could be used there. So I, I actually prototype something like this. It, it's, it's not that. Yeah. So it's basically, it's not really, it's basically we need to do the, put in the work to, to get it done and in, in pushed in Fedora and do, it's basically a political thing to actually make it happen. It's not, it's not like that there are technical huge issues. I know for my packages, all four of the, the upstream change logs, the RPM change log, the, the kit uh, history and the update notes that I actually fill in in body are all different. None is generated from the other because the different things matter to different people who are looking at it. Yeah. So, so but so that that's just uh, aside. So one thing um, uh, I've been thinking about packages. We kind of treat the packages like a huge sea of load, a lot of packages that are more or less independent of each other. And I think 
uh, that, that's kind of wrong. I think there are a lot of packages that cluster together, that, that share uh, commonalities, and but no, right now there's not really many mechanisms to actually make this a reality. Yeah, of course we have groups of people that do that, but the only thing that really binds those packages together are probably shared section of, uh, of, uh, of packaging guideline. And I mean, there is some amount of, of, of dealing with this, with like common uh, macros and stuff like this, but it's, my, my understanding is this is on a very low level. There's very little that, that, uh, that we really share among packages. Um, and one um, way to, to get us is basically pull out common stuff from these packages and put it somewhere. And the problem is uh, where to put it. And traditionally, there has been basically two places where to where we put things. Either you put it in a package, and the packager has full control over it, and but also full responsibility to to make sure everything works. All things are handled by RPM upstream, which is great because it's the same for everybody, but it's also not so great because it's very hard to change, especially because most things, if you change something in the distribution, you need basically a process in which you change from one way to the other. And it's very hard to, to synchronize this uh, upstream with the distribution, and every distribution has its own idea how it should actually look like, which is fine from an RPA upstream perspective, but it's not really um, something um, that we can help with that. So the idea I have, which is still very lofty and, and not very much thought through, is so I have some templates that can be used by packages for building. Uh, I found something that some distribution that does something like this already, which is uh, funny enough, Gentoo, which is very different from RPM, which because they have basically huge, they have basically scripts that build their package and uh, their 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 software. It's really not really even pa package. But what they do have, they have a collection of scripts they can import into packages of a special kind. So they have like three different scripts for Python, they have a script for C libraries and, and uh, all other kinds. So there are about 100, 150 different scripts they do have which you can import and then can use functions from that. So they typically get imported, they don't do anything and you as a package shop can then just call a function that does stuff like calling make uh, like like calling configure and make or, or calling uh, Python setup something and things like this and it's something that you could do with RPM already if you really wanted hard you could basically put everything in, 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 in macros and ship a macro file which is something we kind of already do but it's not really convenient it's not there's not a real way of doing it sensibly as a packager. So that's something. So it's, it's, it's also on, on a borderline where we say, well, th there are a couple of features that RPM needs to, needs to learn, but it's probably also a lot of the distribution actually getting together and thinking about what is actually common between which kind of packages. And so, so my vision is also to get to the point where we have like about a hundred uh, of these helper scripts that, that bind those packages together. Um, if, of course, will be opt-in, so it's basically a helper you can use or cannot use, and the idea is similar with the scriptlets to, to look around for common patterns and replacing them by the, the global uh, version where possible. If this actually gets implemented at a, uh, for a while, which means like 10 years, it will probably also solve all those uh, special stuff for the distributions because you can basically use the global from the, from the release you're actually building on. Yeah, of course, that's, that's, that's like uh, in, in 10 years, maybe. <laughs> yeah, but, but the thing is, even if you replace it for the new stuff and keep the old stuff in there, it, it will still yield a benefit, although if it's not as big as if you just replace the world right now. But the thing is, the number of uh, of releases of, 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 of Fedora and RHEL and whatever will only go up, they will not go down. So, so those lists of ifs will probably get longer. 
and who knows uh, which distributions will extend their lifespans to the decades or centuries in the future. So we want to, <laughs> so we want to get rid of that at some point. So we will probably um, look for some packages that, that are easy targets and we will probably talk to people and see if they have ideas what could actually help them. It, that's, a, that's a two fold thing. There's, it's an RPM side, and of course, there's a huge uh, packager package side, and we need to talk about that. The thing that's more closer to RPM with regards to features needed is uh, doing sub package templates, or it's not quite clear what name will stick in the end. Um, but sub packages are also something that you basically copy over and over and over again, they're all m basically the same. Um, and that could be pulled to a central place and then be reused. The nice thing about having, having it in a central place is that it would also allow the distribution to gain some control over how packages should be. So you could make decisions like, do we want to split out all language packages, for example? Because if you have a macro that's used throughout, you could change this later on if you say, well, now we have 150 sub packages for each, uh, uh, for each, um, um, for each uh, application. That's just too much. Let's come up with a solution that will, like, squish the most important one into like the the the, the big one, uh, and then maybe the the exotic one in three other packages or something. You can then change this in a central place without even bothering the packagers, which is also something. I think it's a huge problem right now. Whenever you want to do something on a policy level for the whole distribution, you basically have to edit 20,000 packages. And uh, there are people who have ob obviously done that. <laughs> and I can only try to, to imagine the pain, but <laughs> it's probably not, not so much fun. And, and pulling this out uh, basically does two things. At the same time, it saves the work for the packagers and the responsibility for the packagers and also enables the distribution to do more things easy, more easily. Um, of course, they could be used in combination with the build templates. It's something I'm not getting into now too much. But of course, if you know that's a Python package, you could basically say, well, Python packages typically have those sub packages and we just include them there and it happens automatically and we don't even have to think what sub packages your type of package actually should have or what the distribution thinks it should have. Um, but that's uh, um, left for stage two or five or something. Um, the, the thing that's a bit more complicated here is that these templates work against the way RPM thinks about how spec files should be right now. Spec files right now are like, a, to some extent, a, a, a quality control for the stuff that gets packaged. So the idea is you have a file list and it lists all the files. And if, they are, if some file shows up that's not in the list, it's an error and we want to detect that. And uh, if some files are missing, we also show an error. And it's basically uh, you as a packager um, looking into the package and making sure they are all fine, it's all OK, no one got hurt. And, 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 you, and, and the RPM checks for you that, that the things you saw there are still there. And of course, it won't work with this kind of templating engine. So it's, it requires a change of, of, of mind and, and of expectation to say, we don't really care what's in the devil package. It's, uh, th these files look like they should be there. We put them there. And if one of them really shouldn't be there, please open a bug and don't rely on RPM uh, telling you this. So that's will, that requires some like cultural uh, shift in, in, in how packaging is perceived, and we'll see how that works. Um, th these are some of those uh, basically removed uh, changes uh, or removed checks that we currently have in place, like what to do if the package is empty. Of course, you just drop it if, it, if it's a template. Um, right now, I, it probably won't build. Uh, I won't go into the details. So don't error out on missing files. You probably need a way to steal files from other packages. If you want like a devil, if you want this, like a sub package, you want to split, be able to split out like the libraries into a lib package and you disable this, you want the libs go back to the main package and not like 
looking into what to do then and change the main package to, to accommodate for this. Um, you we will probably end the way to basically um, append to the templates. So right now you cannot have like two file sections. That's an error. I probably you probably added that that to be an error like a couple of years ago, if I remember correctly. I might be wrong, but that's something we will probably re uh, change. So you actually can use the template and say, well, but we also have these weird packages. Will should also go into the devil packages or something like this. So you can append that without copying in the uh, the, the stuff and redoing it. Um, there are a couple of more complicated th things. I'm not quite sure how to Im implement this correctly. You want probably s at some point have like a sub package per sub package, which sounds like a weird concept. And um, yeah, yeah, we'll see how we do that. Um, the, main, uh, the major uh, use case for this is the, is the new debug info stuff, which is currently basically hand coded into RPM code. Uh, the old one used to be a huge mess of uh, macro stuff that does things somehow, maybe. Um, you know, but of course, the, the way it works like now, uh, if in case you don't know, we currently have a uh, debug info sub package for each sub package that does have uh, binaries basically. Um, and that's something that's more tricky to do because you basically don't only have to create those packages, you also have to put the right files in and they only have to be the files that match to the sub packages, but they are not the same, they are just like related. So there needs to be some weird uh, pattern matching thing. I'm not sure if that will be in the first iteration. Um, but um, that's the main thing. So I, I just realized I'm much quicker than I thought, <laughs> which is probably not a bad thing because um, there's a lot of weird stuff and I'm curious if you have any questions or remarks or things we really shouldn't do. There are still faces that are in shock. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I don't have them here. We we have. Um, we do have some examples on on our our wiki page okay. on RPM. Um, the for the for the package template stuff. My idea is to basically use the normal te package syntax and probably uh, add some uh, config options to the package uh, uh, person ca package command. So, so you can. Out yet or it's not really spec'd out yet. I, there are a couple of features that we would add to the to the package command or to the package section, basically, and that would basically switch all those checks uh, to the right mode, and you would basically um, um, so so that the template does the right thing, except to the normal packages. We will of course keep the package sections that we still have the way they are. So as always, it, we will package will just continue building. Uh, thanks to detect uh, and then the new files or removed files or, or so change its own names or so, the, the right way to do this without having to maintain the file list is probably the, the RPM diff that's now done by the, uh, by the automatic Fedora QA stuff. Yeah, of course. But that, that, ca there, <coughs> that can also no fail, that, that can even fail to build on, on certain kinds of changes if, if the logic is done and right. Of course, that, of course, you don't want to fail to build if a devil package added a header file, but you may want to fail to build if the is on them changed without and without notice or things like that. So I guess that that's the place to do it. Then then we don't have to to do this with the file list. Yeah, I mean, that's the, that's the point. We have to recognize that we are no, no longer in the 90s, and many, many of the concepts that, 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 that build the spec files today have been invented in the 90s, and we now have like a lot of more infrastructure that, that can cover many things that our, the spec file does no longer have to do with, with, the to, with uh, today's environment. More questions?
I have not thought about this yet. The thing is, the thing I hope this will work like is that those templates are are, are maintained in a central location, so not every package has to do their own thing. So the thing that's actually going into the package is basically just include this uh, this style or type of package. So the the stuff that packages can actually do wrong is hopefully smaller than before, preferably much smaller, but. No promises yet. And when you think about the uh, templating part of packaging, uh, do you think that there will be some, some form of versioning of the form of the templating? Like when you record the package later, the full chain for, for templating could change. The template will be another. It will be different. That, 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 that's a tough question. I think we. They will be version somehow, but it basically not within the spec file because the spec file also does not really version the dependencies. So that's something that probably needs to be done in tooling around it because you don't want to update your spec files whenever you change something down there. I would even argue the opposite is true. You want uh, those uh, templates to be the one from the current distribution. So if you rebuild a package for this distribution, it actually applies or conforms to the rules of this distribution. So if you would basically rebuild the same package for, for an older uh, Fedora release, it might have different uh, sub-packages because that's how the distribution should be built. But, but, but we will probably add some hooks to, 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 uh, to, to so th we'll probably do something like build requires for those Templates, so they are not completely uh, uh, um, unconnected to the package. But but it, I'm not sure yet how, how to do that. So, yeah, instead to build an identical package, you also need an identical compiler, etc. It's not just a template. Yeah. So, so it's not. It's not like and now. There's 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 a whole topic of of reproducible builds, and there have been some work into furthering this course. But, and we probably will revisit this with this uh, topic in mind. But as, as a first uh, basic concept, this is the idea that the templates are not bound too closely to the spec file, but they can be swapped out to the right uh, version that we are building on. That doesn't mean that we may say, like do, do some provides or something that, that will, uh, um, in the build package, signify what was used. That's something we might be able to, to add, but it will not be part of the spec file, but part of the build package. Does that answer the question? There was what about better debuggability. For instance, a couple of years ago we had somebody on our team that completely reformatted our spec file and moved all the pre's and posts and broke the way that RPM builds find the end of the script list. And it took me days to figure out what was going on. And maybe there's a way to do it, but I didn't find it, but uh, mm -hmm. Let's say debuggability of RPM is um, limited uh, and, and independent of, of, the, of this, but we will probably uh, need to add more features that will make this easier, like uh, spitting out a spec file extended or something like this. Um, that's still not, not completely thought through, but, but I am aware that this will make debugging harder than it is already. We will probably do something to, to, to alleviate this as, as, as much as possible. That's something on my list. Okay. Uh, getting back to users and groups, the 
very least that RPM build can do is to automatically generate dependencies on those user groups that are required to unpack the payload. And then it would be maybe distribution dependent how to implement these users and groups, not necessarily in the RPM itself. But uh, automatic generation would be like, crucial to solve this puzzle, I think. Yeah, I've not yet uh, bought into one um, um, implementation of the users and groups, and that's that's basically the reason because I'm kind of hesitant to to call some uh, some uh, program that's part of the distribution to do such a fundamental thing. But the question is, the problem is, you actually need to create the users yeah. during the during the transaction or before the transaction. So it's not it's not enough to just say well. It would be nice if we had some users. No, you have to have to actually have it's them. Very yeah, yeah. And but you have to have someone that actually cares about it, and that's probably RPM because RPM is the part that's actually running. Uh, yeah, we will probably make this like a config option, like some macro or two, so that yeah. that weird operating systems um, that have shown up upstream actually we got people submitting patches for OS two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that 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 was my reaction too. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, but uh, we will figure that out. It was a quick. Yeah, that's something we need to th think about. The problem with that right now is that there is no internal representation of that. When RPM currently uh, parses the spec file, it parses them line by line and ex explode it, uh, um, expands it item by item by item. So there's never ever um, an expanded form of the spec file as a whole, um, which is, yeah, I'm sorry, that's how they did it in the, in the 90s. Um, <laughs> well, like like many other things, um, but so that makes me hesitant for now to to just implement something because you're running the risk of having well the version you show the user, which we have expanded, and you have the version that the RPM uses inside. Um, but we need I'm I'm with the template system. We probably need to do something like this. Um, the question with the template system is if it really is part of RPM or not. And I'm not decided yet. As we need for the for the for the uh, Git stuff, we need something that's not RPM, but that's wrapped around the spec file. And it's, it may be possible to do all the templates also in the same step. So you would RPM wouldn't even see that, and that would actually make it easier for us to show the expanded file because then it would exist as an intermediate step, and you would just show that, um, which may be a nice nicer thing. Of course, the, all the, all the um, sub-package templates is all, all within RPM, but it would not be enter, inter, entered into the spec file in RPM. But it's not, not completely decided yet. I'm, I'm kind of hesitant to rely on external tools. I'm also, uh, there are also those, all those git, uh, disk git stuff that can't really be part of RPM, so it's, it's yeah. We, we need to have a better understanding what's actually going on to, to make the decision. Should it be possible to, to have everything at the web in the RPM? Uh, you can go back to like easily adding, editing the, the, the spec file with, with the template. So just, just <coughs> not, not put, so that not just the unrolled spec file lands in the RPM and the, the other one that's just outside. That's probably not preferable. Yeah, there, there are all kind of drawbacks and, 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 and funny side, side things. I'm not even sure if you're really, if it's really legal to not ship the original spec file because it's kind of source. 
So if you, if you expand that and ship only the expanded thing, you could argue if it's ArcGPL, uh, do you have to ship the non-expanded spec file because it's the actual resource and stuff like this. Uh, there, there are a couple of interesting things to ponder on. One could argue that, <laughs> but it, 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 cle it clearly is. It, it, it clearly isn't. It clearly is not. Yeah, if you, if you want ponies or other large animals, um, you can. You, you go <laughs> Yeah, it's probably not that difficult. It's actually no, you, it's actually probably. I'm not quite. I'm not sure. It's probably. So there are a couple of macros which get inserted automatically into your uh, spec file, like like the pre and post of of the build script and stuff like this, which is uh, which does some things that you may not be aware of that RPM like meddles with your files without you noticing and stuff like this. Um, I'm, not, I'm not sure if there's one of those micros that gets inserted into the, uh, to the, the preamble. Probably not, but that's something that could be done. So you basically have a macro in the macro file which has the version which gets then rendered into the spec file. It's, mm, it might need, need a, like, like two or three lines change to do that. So, so, so the thing that we're probably going to do first is the dynamic build dependencies. That's something I've not said that much on. It's, the problem with that is it's, it's not that difficult to do in RPM. You basically just have a build requires section which is executed after prep. The problem is the result of that. And the result of that is ob obviously that a build breaks at this point because you don't have the dependencies. So it means the build system basically needs to read them, reinstall the, the new dependencies, and then continue building, which is something no build system in the world actually does right now. So it basically breaks all build systems, which is uh, which kind of <laughs> make me doing this a bit <laughs> slower than maybe I would have done otherwise. So, so that's that's the main major issue, and I've been thinking about through this a couple of times. But there's in the end, there's no way around it. I think having dynamic build dependencies is a valid use case, especially for all those new languages that ship a file which actually have them. You just have to read them out there, and you don't. We actually don't want our packagers to look in the file, copy out the the build dependencies, reformat them to the way that RPM needs to have them, then copy them in a spec file, and the next build they break because. If they change and you didn't look into the file, that's, that's really not, not, not a sustainable solution. But if you do it, you need to actually calculate it and you can only calculate it with the sources. So it's basically after, during build, after, after prep, which is not a place right now anybody expects the build to fail on a default kind of build. So, but that's probably the first thing we will do. And then we'll look uh, into uh, the both the two template stuff. My guess is, from a from a coding point of view, that the that the um, sub package stuff is more straightforward for us to tackle because it's a actually coding effort. But we will probably so there are a couple of people that will that will push the uh, git this stuff. And that's something we will probably look into first and try to sh to sh 
to forward this because it will um, give a, um, a first view on how templating on spec files in general can, can be done or should be done, which will probably help with the other, other templating stuff. And if the world goes towards <laughs> we are writing tools around the spec file, we will probably use that. If it turns out to be a bad idea, we'll probably do something in RPM. So that's the roadmap I have for now. Someone else had something which I already forgot. Other questions? M more, more, more wishes. <laughs> <laughs> you sometimes need extra packages, but if, if in some environment your checks are not enabled, you don't need this. And it's e much easier to write build required check than do some kinds of if deaths and so on. People are usually not very good in writing We can, deaths. Yeah, that's something we probably can do easily if there are still bits left in that field. Yeah, they used to be. <laughs> they used to be. They used to be for build requires, uh, you remove them, but they are just placeholders, so you can just reuse those bits. Yeah, right. Technically, from from package format, it's yeah. still there. We can probably do that. Yeah. It's, it's po quite possible yeah, that it it's, it's quite possible that it this got removed by accident. No, I have just checked that they are. That there used to be build requires check. Yeah. Somebody said that the check was never uh, yeah. used anymore. So uh, his name is Farmer. Never heard of him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it also used to be possible to put arbitrary qualifiers in, in the requires, and then somebody had the idea to encode soft dependencies actually as requires uh, qualified with hints, and RPM would just treat them as hard dependencies. At least the RPM we ship, I think actually the fork was doing something with this, uh, but uh, uh, the stuff we ship never did. And, and then at some point this just became an error. And this broke several KDE packages because Rex Dealer decided to put requires hint everywhere, hoping that this would actually get used at some point. Yeah. And then the soft dependencies got implemented uh, in a cleaner way and without those. <laughs> if anyone is interested in the history of weak and rich dependencies, uh, we can talk about this uh, after the talk. <laughs> okay, one more. I think you currently can't. You can't. Is there any way to annotate something with some sort of a string or something that, should, that would describe what they're for? Like a name? Uh, maybe a name, yeah, sure. What about putting a comment at the first line? Mm. <laughs> Enforcing comment syntax is probably not a great idea. Like a triplet type. Yeah, I mean, mostly what I want is an upgrade script. Yeah, that, that's, that's something that's not related to this all, but that's something that has been proposed, I think, by Michael Schroeder mainly. Um, the problem we have right now with the scriptlets is it's uh, impossible to fix a broken scriptlet. So if you have a broken, uninstalled scriptlet, you're basically screwed. I mean, yeah, you can fix it by hand by running it without, with no scripts, but that's not kind of the solution you have if you've uh, just rolled out your broken program, uh, your broken package to the world. And that's, that's something that we need to f deal with at some point. It's okay, what's the time? <laughs>